Hello guys, this is Code and Code, and this is lecture series for this is a graph theory advanced lecture series or graph theory part two. And in this lecture series, we are going to start uh, studying network fl uh, flow networks. So this is an introduction to flow ne uh, flow networks. So this flow network lectures is going to be. Um, a small series of itself so there are going to be four or five lectures four lectures at least so this is the basic overview of what we are going to study in this lecture series so first we will be having introduction to various terminologies like flow graph flow network minimum flow and other terminologies and then we will be studying for Fulkerson algorithm for computation of maximum flow and its limitation after that, we'll be going for admin curve algorithm and its implementation. And finally, we'll be solving some of the problems, uh, some of the related problems to network flow. Now, the source and the reference for the lecture series would be cpalgorithms.com. I mean, I'll be studying most of the things from there. If I have any other source, I'll be mentioning that in the other videos as well. So let's start the lecture so this 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 is the first lecture in which we are going to study in the uh, basic terminologies to maximum flow and a flow network so first thing first what is network a network is a directed graph with a uh, g gra directed graph g with vertex set v and s set e combined with a special function c which maps all of the edges to some non non-negative integer or sometimes it can also be real numbers uh, will define the capacity of each edge so basically this we already know graph with v vertex set v and s set e this is called a network if each edge is having certain capacity associated with it so the function c maps all of the edges to certain integer or real numbers which define the capacity of the edge so this is called a network a network uh, you can consider like a literal network uh, in which data flows so from server to our mobile or any device which is connected to internet data comes uh, the data that comes to your device from the server passes through various networking nodes like router or other servers so that can also define the network now what is a flow network uh, a flow network is essentially a network in which we de define or label two extra vertices two special vertices one as source and another one is sync so let's see an example of flow network this is an example of flow network in which as you can see this node right here is acting as source and this right here is acting as sinks i mean sink now you can think that okay source is s i mean why i'm using t as sink so of course if i use uh, i cannot use s for both right and for this you can consider a terminating point this is the source or starting point this is the terminating point so this is source and this is sink now the question is can you mark any node as source and any node as sync the answer is no source can only be those nodes which are only having out edges so as you, as you can see there is no edge which is coming towards node s all of the edges are outside or outward from s similarly for sync there should be no out edges from T there should only be only uh, they should only be in edges as you can see the flow should only be coming towards T or the terminating point or the sink the flow should go only out from source so you can define source only those nodes which are having only out edges and you can define uh, sync only those nodes which are having only in edges now flow what is flow now here in this graph you can see uh, numerator and denominator the denominator defines the 
capacity of each edge so this edge has capacity 7 this edge has capacity 5 this this edge is having capacity 3 and so on so denominator represents your capacity the c function that we have seen in this slide right now let's go for the flow now numerator rep uh, represents the flow now flow is again a function f that maps all of the edges to some non-negative integer or real value uh, which is called the flow or through that edge so this is the amount of thing that passes through that edge it can be data it can be gas it can be water in water supply network and so on so depending upon the situation it can be anything so and of course the flow the function flow function had to fulfill two condition will be uh, will be seeing that in a moment but here you can see uh, this edge is having capacity 7 and the amount that actual flows through this is 6 and this actually represents the maximum flow now see the maximum uh, maximum flow is actually the maximum amount that can be that can flow through the source towards the sink so you can see the maximum amount is 6 plus 4 10 because through this edge from source for amount of of thing whatever it is is passing and from this edge six unit of thing is passing so the in, so in total 10 units of things are passing through source similarly i mean just just let's talk about the source uh first thing we'll be seeing in a moment let's go for the two conditions so important thing is this is the maximum flow you can achieve the maximum flow is maximum amount of of thing you can pass through the source in this case it is going to be 10 now what are two conditions well the first condition is very easy the flow through each edge must be less than equals to the capacity of that edge so of course that that makes sense and no explanation at all so numerator should be less than equals to denominator uh, basically the flow through an edge should not pass uh, should not go over in fact it cannot go over the uh, capacity of that edge this is the first condition and the second condition is as simple as that so uh, except source and sink the sum of inflow should be equal to outflow so for example let's talk about this this note because this is neither source nor, uh, nor sink so here the in uh, inflow is 6 plus 2 8 and the outflow is 5 plus 3 8 so we are good with that for this note inflow is 1 plus 5 6 and outflow is 6 so that's good for this note inflow is 3 and 2 5 and outflow is 4 and 1 5 so you see for each node except the source and the sink the sum of inflow should be equal to sum of outflow for the source and the sink there is a separate condition i mean this is the same condition but in a different manner since there is no inflow to source so we will only talk about the outflow and there is no outflow from terminating point or the sink so we will only talk about the inflow so outflow of source should be equal to inflow of terminating point or sink so you can see in outflow is 6 plus 4 10 and inflow is 6 plus 4 10 which is equal so for for non-source or sync nodes the inflow should be equal to outflow for source and sync outflow of source should be inflow of terminating point or sync so these were some of the important terminologies which i assume were important to discuss before uh, for fulkerson algorithm so in the next lecture we we end this lecture here and in the next lecture we'll be studying for fulkerson algorithm and the limitation which are there with for fulkerson algorithm and how edmund carp uh, comes over the limit limitation of for fulkerson algorithm so this was all for this lecture if you have any suggestion or any doubt of course you can ask in the comment section so thank you guys for watching and till the next video drops keep coding thank you